Now you'll recognize this circuit as uh, simply an inverting summing amplifier. But uh, by modifying the circuit element slightly, we can uh, transform this into a rather interesting circuit. For example, if we were to make the feedback resistor value, let's say R, and then to binary weight these inputs over here, making this one 2R, this one 4R, and this one 8R. And then if we were to do something very interesting like limit this input, limit the input to 0 or 1, that would be like digital, we'll discover something very interesting happens. What we're going to see is that a digital signal will come here, and out of here will come an analog signal. And hence, this is going to become a binary weighted digital to analog converter, a DAC. Let's see how that works. Well, we should by now be able to write the output expression VO by inspection. VO is going to equal minus the weighted sums of all the input, which is going to be V1 times the feedback resistor R over the input resistor 2R plus V2 times the feedback resistor R over the input resistor 4R plus V3 times the feedback resistor R over the input resistor 8R. And of course we notice right off the bat that um, all of the R's cancel and so V out simply equals minus 0 0.5 V1 plus 0 0.25 V2 plus 0 0.125 V3. And of course we could add more uh, resistors going up uh, each time by a factor of 2. And we've expanded this. So now let's uh, see what happens when we start making these V1s, 2s, and 3s digital inputs. So we're going to make ourselves a little table here. A little digital table, a little digital input. And um, we're going to make a V1, V1 right here, V1, V2, V3. And uh, over here we're going to make a little uh, graph of the output. I'll just put it way on the right because I want to make a little sketch in the, in the middle. So here's going to be the analog output. And of course it's going to be an inverted output because this is an inverting amplifier. So if uh, the inputs were all zero, then the analog output will obviously be zero plus zero plus zero is equal to zero. Then if we had an input of one at this uh, point, V3, we would have an output of 0.125 volts. And uh, negative, of course. And then if we went up, the binary scale, we would have uh, this one, which would be 0 0.25, and then get this one and this one, with the sum of these two, 0 0.375, and then if we had this one, it would be 0 0.5, and uh, if we with one higher, 0 0.625, if we went one higher again, 0 0.75, and if we went all the way to the top, it would be 0 0.825. So now let's take a look at this. 875. Let's take a look at this. We're going to make a little plot here. And so on this axis, we should just have these as digital values. So there they are, all the digital values. And in this axis, we'll plot the analog ones. So this axis is digital. 
and this one is n log. And we'll just plot them. So for the first point of 0, 0, 0, we got 0. So we'll just plot it right here. The next one, or maybe I should plot right here. The next one, we went down to 0.125, and it went down again, down again, down again, down again, down again, and down again. And notice that this formed a nice straight line. So this is a digital input. This is the analog output. And so what we have here is a very simple electronic circuit that will convert binary numbers to a voltage. Now, of course, uh, three digits is uh, not um, particularly useful, but uh, in many cases you might have, let's say, 8 or 16 or some other number. Now, the problem with this very simple circuit like this is that the, these input resistors become very, very large because the next one, if we want to add another bit, would be 16, then 32, and then 64, 128, and so on. So uh, this is not the preferred way of making a digital to analog converter, but it certainly is a very simple 